What's your secret weapon in life? Ricky Powell says happiness is his secret weapon. <laughs> Please welcome the happiness guru and author of Happiness Rocks, who's here to take us on a journey of empowerment without a trigger, Ricky Powell. <laughs> Hello, how's everyone doing? Yes, good? Woo! Is this an amazing event or what? Are they over delivering? Yes? I have to say, I would just like to start off by thanking David and Sherry and all the amazing people and staff at Contagious Optimism Live and Smile TV, and thank you. So let's see if this is going to work. You know, the technology is amazing these days. I can actually control my slides with my cell phone. Let me see if this works. Look at that. That's not really true, you know. That's just a cue for them to put up a new slide. <laughs> Full disclosure. Uh, and speaking of that, you know, just so that you do know who I am, um, I've spent my whole life in entertainment. I was a child actor growing up. I had such a blessed career from the age of seven. Bewitched was the very first show I ever did and went on to have, a, thank you, an amazing career on so many shows, Night Gallery, Mod Squad, it goes on and on, and the first Ego Waffle commercial. Yes, I was the first kid to say, Lego my ego. Oh, let's go back one more. Let's, let's go back for, for one more. Let, let's see if that works. Perfect. Now, if you'll notice, this says, happiness, your secret weapon in life and in business. And I must, I'm going to share a little bit about my journey, but if you'll notice, it says, with Ricky Powell, America's number one happiness guy. Is that amazing? Is that a great title? Thank you so much. You know, I'd like to share with you, you know how I got that title? I put it on the slide. I learned from one of my mentors years ago that when you're presenting, you can put whatever you want on the slide. And unless anyone disputes you, you're good to go. And in truth, honestly, I wouldn't even mind if I think we need as many happiness guys and girls out there as possible because not only is optimism contagious, so is happiness. And I'd like to share some of that with you today. So, Jim Rohn, who was one of my favorite mentors ever, in fact, he was Tony Robbins' mentor. Tony Robbins was that 17-year-old kid in Jim's audience. And Jim Rohn said, your personal philosophy is the greatest determining factor in how life turns out for you. And I fully believe that 100%. And now Aristotle's philosophy is happiness is the meaning and the purpose of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. Sounds pretty important, right? Well, it is. I believe that there is nothing, no subject on earth more important than your personal and professional happiness. Now, you need to ask yourself, which are you? Are you a glass half full or glass half empty person? Now, how many of you have heard this choice before, right? Well, I would like to invite you to choose something else. I would like to invite you to choose with me what I try to be, which is overflowing. Be overflowing in the love and compassion and empathy that you show each other, that you show your coworkers, that you show your friends and family. Because have you all been on a journey? Has life been a perfect bowl of cherries thus far? Let's see a show of hands. Anyone? So, yeah. I mean, I have had such a blessed life, but I've had my share of adversity as well. But I'm grateful for every single moment. So now, my personal philosophy has always been, everything happens for a reason. There are no coincidences. I know that there is a reason that every one of you is here today. Because you want more of this, right? It is so important. I've been in the media forever, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute, but there's so much negativity out there. This stuff is 
like medicine. It's all about upgrading our mindset. Your mind is the most powerful supercomputer on the planet, and it's all in the software that you feed it. So I have this notion of making happy the new normal. And what does that mean? Well, we know that our normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees. Yes, right? And all of a sudden, I started thinking, how awesome would it be if we could be happy 98.6% of the time, <laughs> right? I mean, that makes sense, right? It can't be 100% because, as we know, life has its challenges. We go through peaks and valleys, and happiness is where we are at the peaks, and then we need inner peace to get us through the rest of it and to get us through the challenges. Can we all agree life is 10% what happens and 90% what? How you respond, exactly. So, this is a brain. <laughs> and the challenge is our brains were not wired to make us happy. Our brains were wired with this negative bias. And that's why when we're driving down the freeway and there's an accident on the other side, all of a sudden everyone is looking at that accident. It's, we're pre-wired for this. That's why so many people love watching the news and listening to all of this, you know, these catastrophes that are going on. And the thing is, it all goes back to fight or flight. That's the way we're wired. But that goes back to the dawn of man. We don't have to worry about saber-toothed tigers chasing us down the street. We don't have to deal with that. So there's now something called positive psychology. And you've heard it spoken about many times today, and it is an amazing field. It's the best thing I've ever done. Yes, I had my day job all those years, but in an effort to help a very troubled colleague, I picked up my first book on the subject of happiness. And of course, he wanted nothing to do with it, because do any of you know anyone by any chance who liked being a victim, who liked the drama? Yeah, he was one of those guys. For me, it was the best thing I've ever done, was studying the science, because I've learned tools that I'm going to share with you in a minute that you can implement in your own life today, if you're not already doing it, and if you are, you can do it even more, and it's going to help raise your happiness set point. So they've determined that this happiness set point, there's three sections, and 50% is inherited. So you get it through your genes. 10% is your life circumstances. So were you born in a free, a free country? Do you have enough food to eat? Are you making enough money to sustain yourself? All of those types of things. But the exciting thing to me is the remaining 40% is a choice. It is a choice that you make. And so you can decide in the morning when you wake up, if you roll out of bed and you stub your toe, you can ride around in pain and you, know, you, just, you can let it ruin your entire day. Or you can shake it off and say, it's going to be a good day anyway. It really is that simple. So I'd like to share a, an old fable with you that I think illustrates this point and our, our self-worth, how we feel about ourselves very well. There's an old story of three bricklayers, and each was asked what they do for a living. And the first one said, I lay bricks. And that made sense. And the second one said, I'm building a wall. And that made sense too. But the third one said, I'm building a magnificent cathedral. Now think about that for a minute. Each one of them was doing exactly the same thing, but they all had a different interpretation of the value that they were bringing, of what they were contributing to society. So my question to you is, what lens are you looking through? It's just tweaking that lens just a little bit, and it's something that we can all do. So when you're looking in the mirror, do you like what you see? Do you like the person who's looking back at you? Because if you don't, I invite you to just upgrade that software. You can do it. I do it every single day. To and from on that 38-mile commute each way, I am feeding my brain the right material. And it is so helpful. <laughs> what you see in the mirror, what you see, that's what matters most, right? Yes? Thank you. Now, a lot of people, critics out there, the naysayers and the you know, Danny Downers and Debbie Downers, they call all of this optimism and motivational speaking, they call it brainwashing, right? 
Well, I've been working in media forever, and I can tell you, they have been proudly brainwashing you since the 1930s, since you could talk. They're the ones who get you to believe that unless you drive this car, or live in this neighborhood, or look like Ken or Barbie, or make a certain amount of money, that you're less than. Is that true? Yeah. Right. But is that true? Are you less than? If you're not using their products and services? No. No, not at all. So what I explain to people is, this is the brain cleansing. <laughs> this is what we need. So many of us, here's kind of the pattern. We spend years in school studying so that we can get a job we love. Don't you all look like that at work? <laughs> I know I do. Yeah, I don't think so. So that we can settle down and retire and eventually be happy. We sometimes spend years and years and years searching for that soulmate so that we can one day settle down, maybe have a family, and be happy. But the question is, how many of you have ever played the I'll be happy when game? You know what I'm talking about? I'll be happy when I get a better job, when I move into a bigger house, when I drive a better car, when I have my first child, when I have my second child, when my last child moves out. <laughs> There are so many excuses we give ourselves to not be happy right now. Folks, that's all we have. All we have is right now. Not only is tomorrow not guaranteed, our next moment is not guaranteed. So the time is now, and I want you to think about a game that we've all learned to play called Keeping Up with the Joneses. I have news for you, it's gotten much worse. Now, we keep up with the Kardashians. And that is not a place you want to be. This is all I see at work these days. Your brain is the ultimate happiness generating tool, and there are just a few simple tools that you can use every day to help you in that area. Serving others is huge. There's so many worthy, organizations out there. My wife and I did three Avon walks for breast cancer. When you see thousands of people marching for one cause like that, it's life-changing. Operation Gratitude, the list goes on and on. And I am not talking about just writing a check. Donate your time. Your time is the most valuable asset you have. I highly suggest finding a cause and working for them. Forgiveness, that's the greatest gift you can give yourself. Forgiveness is amazing and it is life-changing because when you harbor anger inside you, it's like holding onto a hot coal and expecting the other person to get burned. It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It doesn't work that way. Learn to forgive and it will change your life. Finally, gratitude. Gratitude is so huge, like you've heard all day long so far. And I don't mean just being grateful about the big things, but the little things too. For instance, I love walking. And one day I was walking on my usual path, and I've seen this sign a thousand times, and all of a sudden, it dawned on me. Oh my god, that's not telling me there's a bend in the road. It's telling me to appreciate the gorgeous blue sky <laughs> that's right in front of me. Thank you. You know, I created this, I, I captured it, I captured it with my uh, remote control and captioned it and put it on Facebook and people loved it. And that's the attitude that I'm talking about. One special bonus, may I give you one special bonus? Okay, purpose. And again, you've heard that also. Purpose is so important and knowing why you're here. And if you don't know it, that's okay. But that's the kind of stuff it's worth thinking about. In fact, Mark Twain said, the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. <laughs> and I invite you to go on that journey, and that's why we're all here. We are here to help you with that. It's so worth it, it will change your life. And I leave you finally with this quote, Reinventing the, we excuse me, reinventing the wheel doesn't work, but reinventing yourself does. And you know who said that? I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have been wonderful. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Mwah.